Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for our devotions. I hope you have your Bibles and a cup of coffee. We're going to be looking at the book of Colossians. Um, we want to pick up, I would like to pick up on what we were talking about um, last week as we started to study some of the things that we're finding in the book of Colossians. But before we do that, let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the morning. We thank you for the day that's set ahead of us. We thank you for your grace that is available to us. Our prayer this morning is that we would take advantage of the things that we have in you. And we ask that you would touch and minister to us and through us in our day today. Um, I pray that your blessings would be upon Chapel Hill and the surrounding community that you would touch and minister to us. Even today, draw us closer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, many of you, uh, uh, we wanted to reinforce uh, that we will be opening uh, church again on uh, June the 7th. And um, there are, uh, on Sunday morning, if you missed Sunday morning service, you might want to go back on the website and, and look that up. Uh, one of the first things of the service, I'm making the announcement of uh, how that transition is going to look. Um, and we are asking a few things of you um, when you come back. One of the things that we will be asking is that you bring your own mask. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, we will have masks available for people if, they, if you don't have a mask uh, for the service. We will have them available, um, but we, we, were, we were hoping that we would have uh, enough people would, that would bring their masks. We'll see what happens the first Sunday and see how that works out. Um, but also look on the website, see some of those other details. I think it's in written form and in recorded form as well. Um, but we're looking at Colossians, and um, Colossians is a fascinating letter. It's, it's a letter that follows a pattern um, uh, for, that all of uh, Paul's letters kind of follow. In the first half of the letter, he talks doctrine, and you can kind of go to all of the Pauline letters and look at, look at the Colossians, Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians kind of look at these letters. He starts off in the first chapters, well, he does a greeting first, then he, in the first two chapters, he, he, he gives doctrine. He, he gives truth, um, theological truth, for a couple of chapters. Uh, and so that's the first half of his letters. The second half of his letters always have to do with, all, I think always have to do with how to apply that doctrine or that theology to our practical everyday lives. And so uh, Colossians does that same thing. The first two, chapter, first two chapters of Colossians um, deal with uh, the theology of our reconciliation to God. Paul, if you remember last week's study on Colossians, Paul in chapters 1 and 2, he talks about the fact that we're alienated from God, and the solution to that is our reconciliation to God through Jesus Christ. And in Colossians 1.21, um, he says, Once you have been alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil, evil behavior, that was the d dilemma we talked about. Colossians 1.22, then the very next verse, he gives the answer to the, the, to the dilemma. He says, But now that you, uh, now you have been reconciled to God by Christ's physical body. He uses that phrase, physical body. And then he goes on to explain what he means in the next, uh, in chapter 2, uh, verses 12 to 20. Um, he, he tells us that we have been in the body of Christ, in the physical body of Christ. We have been crucified in Christ, with Christ. We have been buried with Christ, and we have been raised with Christ. So those are significant theological truths um, that we need to meditate on uh, and, and just kind of try to wrap our minds around these truths that, that it wasn't just Christ dying, being buried, and raising for us. It was us being participating in that death, burial, and resurrection. That is a very significant uh, truth for Christians. So that's the first two chapters of Colossians. And then the last two chapters, he deals in these chapters of Colossians with how that reconciliation affects our day-to-day -day life. And uh, at the start of his letter, Paul uh, prays a prayer for us. He says, since the day we heard you heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with knowledge of with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And the next verse that's uh, that was verse nine, chapter chapter one, verse nine. The next verse, verse ten, he says, um, "We pray for you for a certain reason. We pray for you in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit." in every good grow, good work growing in the knowledge of God. Now, you take those two verses together, Colossians 1, 9 and Colossians 1, 10, 
you get the motivation for Paul in, in writing this letter. Uh, that he, he, he wants them to have a knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But he doesn't want that to be just an, an academic knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He doesn't want them just to be smart so that they can you know, beat uh, the Philippians in a, in a Bible contest or something like that. It wasn't academic knowledge or understanding that, or wisdom that he was looking for. He wanted them to have a knowledge, wisdom, and understanding uh, that would affect their, uh, that, the way that they behave. Um, what we know, the, the things that we understand, should affect the way we behave, what we do. So there are two sections to the letter. What we should do in chapters 1 and 2, and, or what we should know, I'm sorry, what we should know in ch chapter one, 1 and 2, and what we should do um, in chapters 3 and 4. And these two themes, uh, these two uh, ideas, the theology and the, the knowledge and the, and the actions, um, they're tied together in chapter 3, verse 1, by this word since. If you look at chapter 3, verse 1, you find this phrase, uh, this sentence, this, Paul says, since, you know, he, goes, he says chapter 1, chapter 2, then he says, since uh, you have been raised with Christ, etc., etc., etc. And so he uses this word since to connect the two sections of his, his letter. Paul is telling us that since we died with Christ, and since we were buried with Christ, and since we were raised with Christ, it should have an impact on the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives. You can't be, you can't die, be buried, and resurrected without it having having an effect on uh, you in certain ways. And so, um, this is just kind of a pattern for all of our Bible studies. I think as we approach the Bible, um, some people all approach the Bible because they want to know stuff. I think it should be in our heart that we should approach the Word of God, not just to know stuff. Um, we want to know things for sure, but we want to know them so that we can live a life that is pleasing to the Father in, according, in accordance with the prayer of Paul. And so that is my prayer for us today, that as, as we continue to read the Word, and I'm a big uh, advocate of the Word, you've heard me preach sermons on how Christians should you know, read the Word, but don't just read it, uh, follow its instructions apply its truths to your life, um, embrace its principles as truth for you, um, and then live a life, day-to-day -day life, in accordance with those truths. So let's bow our heads together. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for the grace that we find every time we come to your scriptures for truth, for knowledge, for wisdom, for understanding. And yet we don't stop there. That knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is transformational to our lives. And we thank you, God, that it changes us from our core, from the inside out. We become more and more and more like Jesus. And this is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you soon again, and uh, we'll have another devotion tomorrow. God bless.